Cool. And for those of you who joined late, I'll, I'll mention it one last time. Johnny does give private lessons. So if you want some of that from him, hit him up in iRacing. And at the same time, if you want to buy him a beer, which means send him a few credits, it's always appreciated on his side. He does a lot of work for these. Let's go. Turn one. It's not really turn one because it's one of these old school British tracks that have actual turn names. I think this is called Old Hall. And through here, my braking reference is sort of halfway down the first banner on the left side. The first advertise, advertisement banner on the right side. So I'll pass the start of it. And about halfway down, I'll start braking. And I'll drop it down into third. And through here, it's sort of, because it seems like a, a fairly fast corner, and it is. So you'd be tempted to really try to carry as much speed as possible through it. But it's a little bit faster to to not turn in quite as early and really think about trying to get on the throttle at least by the time you get to your apex, which would be right here. So you can run over that inside curb and even the grass after it a little bit. So you're apexing fairly late and you want to ideally try to be able to get back on the throttle by around this point. The earlier, the, the better, as long as you don't slow down ridiculously. And on exit, you can use all of the exit curve, obviously, but even after that, you can dip maybe two tire widths on the grass screen afterwards. And it really, really does help. And now through turn two cascades, you want to turn in by around this point. So right as the track, there's a, there's a dip in the track. So right as you go over that dip, you want to be turning in and really try to make the most of, of the track through here on the inside. So you really want to use as much as possible of, of that inside curve just so that you keep it as tight as possible and also as fast as possible. I forgot to mention through here. I usually turn in right at that dip on the road, as I mentioned, and I'll lift off uh, just a tiny bit later, just to help me keep a little bit of extra speed going through here. And you can also use, just brush the brakes uh, very very slightly through here not only to slow the car down a tiny bit but also to help you turn the car a little bit better yeah your aim should be to use all of this uh, inside curb as much as possible you can you even have a bit of a margin on the inside where you can use a little bit of grass and not get an off track anyways but ideally just use the curb and use as much of it as you can and then coming out of here, it's very important to not get on the throttle too early. Because you probably felt tempted to get on the throttle really early and end up going really, really wide on track and then having to come all the way back. So really try to delay the throttle a little bit so that you only come out about as wide as midway down the track. So this is probably as wide as you want to go. You want to go, don't want to go much wider, simply so that you can get back to the left side of the track and have the car nice and parallel to the edge of the track by around this point, which is when you break for turn three. Uh, Nick Nickerbrook, I think it is. <laughs> and the, the reference I'm using for breaking here is right where the grass starts on the left side. So right here is where I typically, around that point is where I typically start to get on the brakes. I'll st typically st start to get on the brakes. I'll be dropping down uh, from fourth down into third. So three gears down. And through turn three itself, it sort of makes sense that you'd want to really slow it down 
to be able to get on the throttle as early as you can. But really, through here, it's sort of counterintuitive. But you kind of need to overdrive the corner a little bit to be fast, where you really want to carry quite a bit of speed through here and feel as if the car naturally drifts a little bit wide uh, after the apex. You don't uh, carry enough speed that you end up having to touch that exit curb, but you want to carry enough speed that the car naturally wants to go uh, pretty wide. Around here is as wide as, as you want to go with the amount of speed you want to carry through there. And obviously the earlier you can get on the throttle, the better. But it's very important to be very conscious about what your steering, what your steering wheel is doing through the section, because it's very easy to just use even, believe it or not, even even 15 to 20 extra degrees of, of angle on your steering wheel, even for 10 meters through here can have a huge, huge effect on, on your speed. Because just, just that extra scrub you're creating by, by turning your wheel, that extra bit will do quite a lot to scrub off speed and, and really fight against the acceleration of the car. Through any acceleration zone, really, but through here, it's particularly important to just keep the wheel as straight as you can, just to make your acceleration as efficient as possible. Through turn four, I forgot the name of this one. But th there's actually a, a nice little trick going through here. It's obviously flat out, but you're looking to apex to use these two inside apexes and just run over a tiny bit of grass on the inside here and then the apex afterwards. But the trick is going through this first apex, you can actually use the bump to actually flat shift from third to fourth. So you can keep your foot on the throttle and just pull the paddle. And when you go over the bump, the engine will hit the rev limiter and that will allow you to shift up without uh, letting off the throttle. So you'll save a couple of hundreds there. It's not massive, but it's pretty cool to do, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so it should be easily flat out. And then going down the straight. So this first part, keep it as, keep it pretty tight. Then you'll start to drift wide. Your car will more or less be over this sort of streak of, I don't even know what it is. I guess it's sand to clean up an oil spill. Like it runs all the way down the track. You sort of want to be right on it. And... <laughs> And through here, it's very, very important to make sure you keep the car as tight to the left side of the track as possible. So you really want to get as close as possible to this inside curb. But after it, you want to just run uh, right by the edge of the track, simply so that you set up for, for turn five a little bit better. It's very important to have the car not only right at the edge of the track, but again, also parallel to the edge of the track. And I'll typically be breaking it around this point because all of the race sessions during this week will be run in late afternoon weather. You can sort of get away with using shadows as breaking references. You usually wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, I think you can get away with it here simply because there's no better reference. So I'll typically break it around this point, which is uh, maybe uh, five to seven meters from that bit of light uh, running across the shadow. The other thing, going down the straight, I'll never shift up into fifth. I'll keep the car in fourth. And if you got a good run out of turn three, you might even hit the limiter before you start breaking for turn five. But that's honestly better than shifting up into fifth, simply because your braking zone through here isn't very long and the corner comes up pretty quickly. And if you have to downshift twice, that generally upsets the car a little bit too much. Just keeping it in fourth, and I'll break the straight line, I start turning it in, I'll drop down into third then. Through here, it's very important to nail both of the apexes. So the first one, obviously, 
get as close to that inside curve as possible. But then I think the most important part of this section, it's also a little bit counterintuitive, but you want to keep it pretty tight to the inside between the first and the second curbs. Simply because of the camber of the road, if you end up going a little bit too wide, it really pulls you out and you have to wait quite a lot more to, to be able to get back on the throttle. So this is probably about as far wide I'd go between the two apexes. And you generally can't get on the throttle. Uh, keeping it fairly tight like this, you generally can't get back on the throttle relatively early after the first curb. By around this point, I'll easily be able to get back on the throttle completely. Look out for that second apex, which is as close as you can get to this curve, as long as you don't go over it, because it's pretty high. And then on next exit, you've got all of this curve to use, and even a little bit of grass after it, if you ever need it, because you don't seem to get an off track in, unless you really, really get on it. Then finally, for the last corner, I think this is another sort of counterintuitive corner, at least it was for me. But when I started learning the track, I was really, really slowing down for it and really focusing on being on the throttle super early coming out of here. But it's actually really easy and quite a bit faster to, to carry quite a bit of speed, simply because of the camber of the road allows for it. And it's, it's a little bit faster. So what I'll do is I'll arrive here in fourth gear and I'll start breaking right at the end of, of the shadow here. So at around this point, I'll get on the brakes, downshift twice into second gear. And you want to turn in fairly early. You don't necessarily want to use all of the curb but you do want to get close enough as to touch it just a tiny bit with your inside wheels. And your apex should be at around here. It's very easy to try to late apex this corner and turn in too late, but it's quite a bit faster to, to just carry the speed through, break fairly late, but also turn in fairly early. And you want apex at around this point It's very easy to get on the throttle too early here, and because of the camber of the road pushing you outwards after the apex, it's also very easy to obviously run out of road. So be patient with, with your throttle out of here. And obviously aim to use all of the exit curb after that. And that would be the lap. And actually, as I ran laps for this week, I I think I found that for this particular track, setting your SPU on four is a little bit quicker than five, which is what I, I'd usually use. I've only tried four and five, so maybe three, two, one, and zero might might be a quicker still. But so far, I think in my experience, four was about eight hundredths of a second faster. I haven't tried the others. Johnny was kind enough to share his replay of his time trials with us again this week, so we're going to go to that. Enjoy.
Well, I'd just like to say thank you again to Johnny for taking the time to give us a walkthrough. If you would like more help from Johnny, he also does private coaching sessions. You can find his contact information down below in the description if you're interested. 